Hello and welcome to this What's New in Quay 3.3 session, where I would like to briefly show you all the great stuff which is coming out with our most recent version of Red Hat Quay. I hope that you are as excited as I am because there's really something for everybody in this new release. Let me start with a high level overview of all the stuff we will introduce with this newer version. The big the two big features are we will ship an entirely overall and new version of Claire, the vulnerability scanner, which is used by Claire. We will ship the initial Claire v4 version as a tech preview feature together with Quay. The other thing is the Quay bridge operator, which runs on all the OpenShift cluster Quay is serving content to and integrates Quay into the various OpenShift workflows and user experience somewhat similar to the existing internal registry user experience. And then there are a couple of other great features we added to the release, such as the LDAP filtering and the Quay builder enhancements for a better tagging support. And we also added a couple of things on the logging side. And we introduced two other features as marked as tech preview or experimental, which are probably pretty important for the open source community and for OpenShift. And we plan to stabilize and extend them in future releases of Quay as well. And then there's one item we already shipped with the most recent version of OpenShift. We again enhanced the container security operator and the console integration of Red Hat Quay into the OpenShift console. So let me start with Claire version four. In case you don't know, Claire is not only used by Quay, Quay.O and Project Quay, it's also used by various other products and offerings out there, such as AWS ECR or VMware Harbor. We are using Claire as the scanning backend for both Quay.O and Red Hat Quay, and that's why scalability and sustainability is probably really important for us. And effectively, we obviously skipped the version 3 because the current version we are using in Quay 3.2 is v2. And this has been caused by a decision we made pretty early, basically saying that if we want to support all the items we plan to support or all the support today, then we probably need to change Claire in such a significant way that it might make sense to really refactor the entire application. And that's, that's exactly what we did. Right, So we introduced an entirely new manifest-oriented uh, API instead of the layer-based one that we had in the past. And we also introduced an entirely new architecture uh, consisting of Claire Core and the service wrapper. There's a great recording out there which explains the technology changes we did underneath a little bit more in detail. We also introduced from an end-user perspective, probably the most important thing is that we introduced the support for programming languages and initially we will start to support Python, probably because Quay has been written in Python and additional languages are planned for future releases of both Quay and Claire, uh, of course. And another change we did is the way how Claire is integrated or speaks to Quay. And this is now based on content addressable ID to really ensure that it's uniquely identifies the image as a whole in contrast to what we did in previous versions of Quay, uh, of Claire. So from a side-by-side -side comparison, there are a couple of big differences. If you just look at what, what we've done with Claire version 2 versus what we do now with version 4. Um, so it's no longer a monolithic ap application. Yeah, so we extended the reports of the content of the container, significantly extended them. Um, we introduced the package manager support. We introduced the support for source RPM package, which is required in order to leverage other security metadata than the ones we've used before. And this finally helps us to detect more vulnerabilities than we found in the previous version of Claire. So this is, is those are two screenshots from a demo, which is also available out there, um, where you can basically see what happens if I scan exactly the same image, first using Claire v2, and then as a second uh, step, using Claire v4. And you might notice that there is a huge difference in the number of vulnerabilities which have been found. And this is not only caused, caused by the Python application vulnerabilities which have been found, but also it includes a couple of vulnerabilities on the OS level stack, um, because we are now using the extended security metadata provided by the vendors of those distributions. And this effectively helps us to have a broader content coverage than we had before. 
Another big thing we introduced is the Bra uh, Quay Bridge Operator. In the past, we sometimes called it the Quay OpenShift Integration Operator. We just renamed it. And this is an operator we really built in st very strong collaboration with both our internal communities and the customer community as well. So out of the box, it supports, of course, multi-cluster setup. It has to because the primary purpose of Quay is to serve content to multiple OpenShift clusters. And it also features an OpenShift um, build integration to change a couple of things, which otherwise you would have to configure manually. So from a very high level perspective, an OpenShift namespace or the equivalent to an OpenShift namespace is a Quay organization. Yeah, and there are a couple of, of downsides associated with this simple mapping. So an organization is also used as a tenant, which means in order to create a new organization, we need to ensure that the different users and teams in this organization are mapped to the corresponding permissions on the OpenShift side. So basically what we do here is, if it was in OpenShift, somebody creates a new project, we automatically create the corresponding organization within Quay and then automatically create three different robot accounts in this organization, one with white permission and two others with read permission. The support for multi-cluster uh, uh, setups is of course important because we need to avoid that there are any name collisions because obviously the organization name within a query registry needs to be unique. And we also do all the magic which is required uh, in order to have the sequence management on the uh, on the OpenShift side, so the robot account uh, tokens are stored as a secret automatically, the service accounts are configured, and we also change the build configuration in order to leverage now Quay as the output destination for all images which have been built on OpenShift. And the, the key takeaway is if you're using the Quay bridge operator, then you probably don't need to use the OpenShift internal registry anymore, at least not for those builds which are executed in this way using the Quay bridge operator. Yeah, so it runs on all the OpenShift clusters Quay serving content to it. So it's not limited to the OpenShift cluster where Quay is running on, but it's really about all the other clusters Quay is serving content. Um, so in a couple of sample use cases are shown here. So I already explained the new project. Of course, the same applies to a new application or to a new deployment and so on and so on. So there are plenty of use cases we will cover with the bridge operator and we will extend the list and amount of those use cases over time in future versions. It's important to call out that in its current version, so the initial version we will ship as part of 3.3, there are a couple of manual steps required before you can initially deploy the Quay Bridge operator on an OpenShift cluster. All of them are called out in the operator description shown in the embedded operator hub. So you just need to go through those description and we also did a recording explaining those a little bit in further detail as well. The other operator we already introduced with Quay 3.2 is the Quay operator, formerly known as the Quay setup operator. But since operators are primarily to ensure a better day two experience, we effectively renamed it because obviously the Quay operator has not been written just for the initial deployment, but it's also su uh, supposed to take care on day two aspects. And this is exactly the thing we changed now with the newer version of the Quay operator. Uh, now the operator becomes aware of the changes which happen in the background, either using the Quay config app or if really needed, the changes directly happen in the Quay config YAML file as well. So the operator now is responsible for manage a couple of uh, Quay specific items. Uh, which means in the future versions, those files will even be uh, marked as read only in the config app to really reflect, okay, those items have to be managed via the operator. We simplified a couple of things, we changed a couple of things, we extended the capabilities, but the biggest change is really that now the, both the config app and the operator doesn't need to be stopped or killed anymore, right? So you can continue to run both and use both side by side. Again, you also can directly edit the config YAML file, which is absolutely not recommended, but it's still an option. And for some of the changes, which either happen via the config app or the config YAML file, the operator even does a reconciliation loop for those changes, which is pretty powerful 
And as I said, we will continue the list of the, all those changes and a better management uh, over time. And then there are um, two features on the log management side. So one is the log exporter and the other one is the um, logs via Elasticsearch. So let me start with the log exporter. What the log exporter uh, feature provides, you can basically go through the uh, query UI or you can also use the API uh, and you can define what kind of logs I want to export. So you can define a date range and whether you're using the export, the, the log exporter feature on a repository or on an organization level, this of course has an impact on the amount of log files which are captured and then exported. So there are two main export methods. The first one is email. Then you get effectively a JSON output attached to the email. Uh, this of course requires that the email have been configured uh, a pro a properly in your query deployment. And the other method is using a callback URL and then you get notified how and where to pull those um, exported log files from an S3 bucket, which is pretty powerful as well. Um, in the uh, on the roadmap, we have another item which haven't hasn't found its way into the three dots we release, which is that those log exporting uh, functions are triggered in the or tracked in the audit log as well. Another feature we originally developed for Quadro is in, instead of storing all the audit logs in the database, we basically move them out into an elastic search stack, which allows us to, of course, way better scale than we did before. And this is especially required for large scale query deployments. And we have plenty of customers who are using query at scale. And that's why this feature is really pretty, pretty important. So from an end user standpoint, looking at the UI, nothing changes just it's just a, a change which happens in the back end instead of pushing the logs to postgres we are pushing them to elastic but still in the ui you can see the same audit logs you can see the same information the same statistics nothing really changes from an from a user perspective um, in addition to just moving the logs out to elastic search you can also use uh, an alternative log producer so currently it's kinesis only uh, in future version, we consider to also support uh, Kafka-based deployment as well. So basically, you just need to configure the log storage configuration. So there's a new section in the Quay config app, and then you need to fill out the data and the same for Kinesis if you plan to use it. And that's it. And starting from there, the logs are no longer stored in the database and instead pushed to Elasticsearch. As I mentioned, we already shipped together with the newest version of OpenShift a couple of changes and extensions for the OpenShift console. Um, effectively, we now have a couple of additional list views. We have a pod views, uh, really the vulnerability information associated with a, with a particular pod. And we also have a couple of other views we added to the OpenShift console. And there's a very good blog post out there written by our user experience team, which describes all those changes and new things we added with OpenShift's newest version. Another feature we introduced is LDAP filtering. So users who are using LDAP or Active Directory as their authentication backend can now restrict the access to Quay with a couple of things they can specify. So they can specify a specific LDAP filter and then the result is stored in the config file and starting from there, only the users which are matching those filter rules can log in into Quay. Another feature we introduced, which is pretty powerful as well, is a custom tagging for the builders. So it's important to know that in the past, we have been very opinionated on the way how we defined the resulting text of an image which has been built via the Quay build automation. So it has been either the branch name of what, what it, the branch which has triggered the build or it has been the latest tag uh, if it was the default branch. And now we are allowed to um, specify custom tags. So you can deselect the default rules and then you can specify your custom tags. And this could be a static tag or a dynamically template tag. So it's pretty powerful in order to have more sophisticated ways to tag. And of course, you can combine them and use multiple of them side by side. Another feature which is marked as tag preview as of today simply because the OCI distribution spec is still not an official standard yet. 
we introduced uh, the full support of the OCI distribution spec as it is as it exists today. And this probably makes us the first open source registry, both hosted and on-prem, which does support the OCI, OCI distribution spec in its current form. And this also allows us to do a couple of things. So the OCI mime time support has been pretty important for us uh, because we are driving a couple of things on the Reddit side, such as source container, which require the mime type support. Um, initially, some of the OCI provided tests didn't pass and we submitted PRs in order to fix them. In the meantime, most of those PRs have been have got accepted um, by the um, OCI initiative. And that's why we are, we are really proud that this has been passed now and we don't expect any really big changes before the final OCI distribution spec comes out. So probably from day one, we will be able to support the OCI spec after it has been finalized and published. Um, another feature which is not even experimental, but take, uh, which is not even <laughs> tech preview, but experimental, is the support for the OCI artifacts spec. So this is another F, um, initiative driven by OCI, um, which is primarily driven by Microsoft, IBM, Red Hat, and Docker. And the goal here is that you, the the, the goal of the spec is to allow that you can store arbitrary content types in the registry. So it's no longer limited to images, which also includes Helm charts, CNET bundles, uh, Kubernetes deployment templates, OpenShift deployment templates, whatever else. So one of the uh, co-founders and the, the lead architect of Reddit Quay is one of the maintainers of the spec. And this of course enabled us to have a very early implementation and effectively working closely with the Helm community allowed us to introduce an initial Helm v3 chart support as an experimental feature and experimental really on both the Quay and the Helm client side. It's not available on Quedo yet because Quedo is a production environment and we do not enable experimental or even check preview features. So even the OCI man type support is only enabled on selected namespace. So which means you need to enable or switch on a feature which is clearly marked as experimental on both the Quay side in the config YAML file and on the Helm client side. And as of today, it's it's just for us, it's a very early pilot. Uh, we wanna get it out as early as we can in order to gather additional feedback and input from the community and our end users. We don't have any specific UI support, which means if you go to the Quay UI and push a Helm chart there, then from a UI perspective, the Helm shot looks similar uh, like an image, but if you try to dock or pull the Helm shot, obviously um, it will fail. Of course, we will change and improve this over time, but keep in mind, there is a certain risk that there won't be any upgrade pass from the uh, experimental status to the final production uh, version we hopefully ship in uh, one of the future versions of Quay. So technically you should be able to run a couple of uh, commands against Quay uh, for Helm charts as you previously did for container images. You can log in and log out to the registry. Um, you can um, push and pull those Helm charts as you do for container images. Again, it's experimental feature. We are working closely with the upstream community in order to improve this over time. And this is the last slide. Um, in addition to all the stuff we introduced, we continue to deprecate a couple of features which are no longer used, no longer uh, maintainable, or just they don't, they are not needed anymore. Um, with the previous version, we already started the deprecation of rocket conversion, BitTorrent distribution, and the Docker v1 push support. And with though with this release now for the ups for the downstream product. Uh, we, we started the deprecation of squashing the application registry, which is hopefully being replaced with the artifact spec support we just talked about. Um, we deprecated the images API. Obviously this has been replaced by the manifest API. Uh, and we started to deprecate the commercial support for NFS uh, with this newest version of Red Hat Quay. And this brings me to an end. Thanks for watching and enjoy our newest version of Red Hat Quay.